behind someone. Yeah. That's, what's the answer to the first question? Um, Common common law make make uh, decisions of the past decisions of higher court. Common law make uh, decisions of the past decision of higher court. And so they follow past decisions, right? In common law, they follow past decisions yeah. of other courts. What about civil law? Civil law, legal system is generally divided into three uh, types of code. Mm -hmm. Commercial and civil. Criminal. Yes. And what do they use for making their decisions in the civil law? Common law, they use the past decisions of courts. What do they use in civil law? To make decisions. Rules or codes, okay? Everything is written down. Uh, okay, the second question. Trey came in. Up here. Uh, Kim Sang Hee. Can you answer the second question? Second question. in the class the last time a couple of things that we should write a clause in the contract. What were they? When we're making a contract, what kind of clause should we put in the contract? Location. Location, right? The jurisdiction. If there's a problem, where is the, which court is going to decide? So what's the jurisdiction? Anything else? Okay, also we said we can write about doing the mediation or arbitration, okay? instead of litigation, especially if we're a small company. Okay, the third question, uh, John Young Hee. John Young -Hee. Why? Uh, saves time. Saves time, what else? Saves time and saves money. Saves money, anything else? Another important fact? <coughs> saves time and money, what else? Can anybody tell me what's the other important fact? Private. 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 
not public. Okay. So then, the last class we were finishing talking about the intellectual property, protecting the intellectual property. So. We already mentioned that uh, in the different legal systems, they have different idea. In the common law, the use is more important. In the civil law, registration is more important. Okay? Registration, don't look. Is that correct? In Korean, don't look. Registra register. Yeah, so registration, the first company to register a trademark is considered the rightful owner. Okay? So if we think we can always establish ownership just by registering, then we're wrong. We have to understand that in some countries they have prior use. Right? If I can show I was using something first, then uh, the prior use is more important than registering some countries. So anyway, we should protect our intellectual property rights uh, through registration. Uh, Michael Jordan didn't protect his registration in China, so there was some other uh, shop or store being sh sold under the name of Michael Jordan, right? But Michael Jordan had to pay them a lot of money to get back his trademark, because he never registered his name. He didn't think the other people would say his name. Do you know Michael Jordan? How do you say Jordan in Chinese? Jordan, right? So somebody in Chinese was using that name. But he didn't register it in China. So we have some international agreements. The Paris Convention for the protection of industrial property. There's a hundred, like I said, not every country signs up. A hundred countries for 200. Inter-America, in America, Madrid arrangement for European countries. So these have some standard conditions, right? So if I register in one of these countries, it's registered in all the countries, a kind of way. Uh, we have the World Intellectual Property Organization. Uh, this overlooks all the other treaties. So we have about patents. We also have treaties in Europe. And uh, TRIPS, trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights. So these are all international agreements and conventions. So international law is a little bit complicated. Some countries make treaties with other countries about one topic. Some treaties, countries make treaties with other companies about another topic. But we should re register with these different organizations. So, sometimes in other countries there are regulations that the holder of the patent should share the knowledge. So sometimes we have to share the knowledge. If a patent is not used within an average of three years, then it expires. So you have to actually use the patent. You can't just make a patent and sit on it. Okay? In the US, they, we already explained about this, they encourage and protect innovation. So that's what a patent is for. Korean idea or Asian idea is more one person's idea should benefit everybody. So different thinking on patents and copyrights. So in order to protect IP, we register our intellectual property with the relevant agencies. Okay? Uh, if there's a problem, we try mediation and arbitration first. Then we can complain to the host government. We can complain to the WTO. Okay, it's the last step. If there's a problem. Uh, we already talked about Microsoft and Warner Bros. Microsoft, they don't try to protect much their IP in China because they see the piracy like a free trial. Some companies give the free trial. Okay? So they think later people might pay for more Microsoft products. And Warner Bros. also in China, they just charge, they change the price. Okay? They make a lot cheaper than the other countries when they sell their movies. <coughs> the different strategy. So uh, then we have laws about marketing. 
all countries have laws, different laws about advertising and marketing, about the promotion. What can you say? What can't you say in the advertisements? Okay, especially for things like alcohol and cigarettes, it's very different. Okay, are you allowed to advertise at sports events? Are you allowed to advertise on the TV? Uh, so, like, how long is the advertisements allowed on the TV? When I went to the US, I couldn't watch the TV because they have 15 minutes of the program and movie and 15 minutes of advertisements. <coughs> but in Ireland or the UK, they have lim limits. They're only allowed to show two minutes or two and a half minutes every 30 minutes of advertisements. So we have different laws about labeling. Some countries you have to say all the ingredients exactly. Some countries you don't. We talked about sometimes there is some control on the price. And then channels of distribution. How can we distribute the product? So this difference is uh, across markets can cause some complication and prop problems for managers and companies. Okay? Especially in countries which have detailed and complicated rules, like Sweden, France, Canada, China. Germany has also very strong rules, because Germany had a problem before of propaganda when Nazis came to power. So Germany has perhaps the most strict rules on advertising, what you can and can't say in the advertisements. <coughs> For example, in uh, France and Germany, they have very strict time limits. So you can't show any advertisement about alcohol before 10 p.m. Okay? Or before 11 p.m., that kind of thing. Uh, so just we need to be aware. Again, for your project, if you are selling some product like alcohol, then this is going to be very relevant. Okay? You're making your marketing plan for the country, so you have to find out what it, a little bit about the law. Okay, maybe I'm selling alcohol, I can't advertise some countries, you can't advertise on TV at all. Okay? Some countries only after a certain time, some countries you can't sponsor the sports events. <coughs> These days in Europe, a lot of sports uh, organizations are stopping the alcohol sponsorship because to stop the young people from drinking too much. <coughs> what about in Korea? Is there any limit on the alcohol sponsoring in Korea? Can you see the ad during the day for the alcohol on the TV? So, can they show people under the age of 30 in the advertisement? No, they can't. They have to be over 30 in the advertisement. Over 20. So, uh, different countries have different cyber laws about the main names. We have different laws on taxes. It's quite complicated for the digital uh, services. Where did the transaction take place? Where do we tax? Where can we tax the companies? So nowadays, companies like Amazon, eBay, Facebook, they're being analyzed and criticized because they're not paying enough tax. They use, actually, Facebook uh, just paid 40,000 pounds tax in the US <coughs> last year. Okay? Because Facebook said that it did all of its business in Ireland. Okay? So it means that somebody wants to advertise on Facebook, then Facebook tells them pay Facebook Ireland, and then they pay the money to Facebook Ireland. So they pay all their tax in Ireland. Even though the people who are paying them are from the UK. They're UK advertisers. So recently the UK government decided they talked to Facebook and Facebook agreed, okay, we're going to start paying tax in the UK. Because the UK companies are paying for the advertisements. So it's a little bit complicated these days, but the governments are catching up on the companies. So the jurisdiction, if the e-commerce seller advertise in the consumer's country, then the consumer's country hears the case. So you have a problem with the e-commerce company, Right, they advertised in your country, it should be heard in your country. So, uh, then just let's discuss the last question with your partner. We look at the steps. How should we protect our intellectual property? We have some IP and we're worried in the overseas market, 
something might happen. So what should we do? Protect it. of the WTO, okay? And anyway, maybe they don't have much choice, okay? The WTO puts a tariff on their products. There's not much you can do about it, okay? Your products now, have, you have to pay extra tax. So the WTO can punish countries, if they, only if they sign up, they're members of the WTO, okay? So China recently also is a member of the WTO. So, then, uh, let's do these internet tasks, we're using the internet. So we can find out about the legal system of a country, do they use common law, do they use civil law, what kind of laws they use, right? So check about Bulgaria, okay? What does the PCT have with? This is about the intellectual property, and what service does the ICC arbitration provide? So follow the link. Just you can click on the link here. If you make the full screen, you can click on the link and it opens. Okay? Click on the links and try to find the answers. <coughs> Thank you. 
Google CIA World Backbook Bulgaria legal system, then it comes up, right? First hit. So just type in exactly what you need on, on Google, right? So you're looking for the Bulgarian legal system at CIA. So just type those things in. Then it comes up. research for our project, we should be able to do online research properly, right? So I can see, so if, we, if I want to do, find this quickly, I, can, I have some different choices. I can go to the CIA website, right? Well now I need to find countries, and I need to find Bulgaria, and I need to find legal systems. Okay, that's going to take five minutes. So when we're searching online, we want to type in exactly what we're looking for. That's much more quick. Do you understand? We type in here CIA, right? Words we need, Bulgaria. Okay, legal system. Then we press enter. And then we find it after two seconds. Okay? It should just take two seconds to find that. 
but I find people are struggling to find the information on Google. So I think you guys need to practice your internet research, okay? You should be able to find these kind of things quickly. That's one of the reasons I'm giving you this exercise to do in class, to check if you're able to do the research online, okay? You're going to need to do that research online when you're doing your project, a lot of research like that. Okay? You're, for your country, you're going to need to find out about the legal system. So it's better to type in exactly, type in exactly what you're looking for, okay? At the start. You can type in some, if you don't want to type in a source, you don't have to type in a source. You can type, if you like economic intelligence unit, you can type in EIU here instead of CIA, right? Let's see what happens. Or you can just leave blank. Okay, so here we have, if I type in EIU Bulgaria legal system, okay? It takes me to the Economist Intelligence Unit, which we looked at the last time, okay? You have to log in. You should, you're going to need to use this for your project, so you should have registered for this at home, okay? And we just log in. So, try to do these kind of tasks quickly, okay? Just type in WIPO, Google, enter, okay? ICCWPO, arbitration, enter. If your computer is slow, then remember that, and the next class, sit at a different place, where you might get a faster computer. <coughs> So then let's answer the questions. So what's the legal system in Bulgaria? What does the PCT help with? So it protects people. How does it work? You went to make the form of the international applications to them and they register the application. Yes, and then what? They register their patent. Right, you made a patent about making a new flying car. Okay, so they register your patent. Then what happens? Okay, so that's easier, right? Rather than having to complete the patent application for 148 companies, Countries, this organization is going to help you. You just send them your application, okay? And then they decide, yes, this is a new patent, or no, it's not a new patent, it already exists, okay? Uh, then they, they then send the application to all the countries, and then it's done like that in an easier way. Okay, we can see all the countries here on the map. So most of the countries are members here. Okay, and then the last question, what service does the ICC arbitration provide? Did anybody get the answer to this one? What kind of service do they provide? They provide commercial cases of arbitration and mediation and mm -hmm. even help with them. Yes. So, they it's a dispute resolution procedure, right? It gives a binding and final decision. Arbitration, you can't change your mind. You sign up before the arbitration, I will accept the decision. Okay, so they have certain rules and they can organize the arbitration and the arbitrator for you. Okay, obviously you need to pay them money, but it's not going to be expensive, as expensive, right? They will have a list of arbitrators. You will choose three arbitrators you like from the list. The other side will choose three arbitrators they like. Maybe there's just seven arbitrators on the list. So we should be able to find one which matches both of the companies. Okay? Then that arbitrator, usually the arbitrator is an expert, usually retired from the field. But they understand, for example, if you're doing about, uh, say, semiconductors, it's somebody who worked in semiconductors. So they understand about the business. Okay? Could they also a retired judge? So we can uh, get use those organizations to help us. So it's kind of like international courts. 
Yes, kind of. It's it's private, right? They do, they're doing that for profit. They organize, they have people working for them, the arbitrators. But companies like it because it's private and it's cost less and then going to court. Okay? Takes less time. They can get a decision. What do you think? If you're working for the company, which do you prefer? Arbitration or litigation? Cheaper. Hmm? Arbitration, okay? More companies, as the time goes by, more and more companies are doing arbitration. So do you have any questions then about the legal environment? So then let's look, let's look at the uh, regional environments. So we're going to look at just different regions in the world, and especially emerging economies or developing economies. Especially for, we talked about political and economic and legal environment. We don't have too much issues in the developed countries, like we gave the examples like Sweden or Denmark, okay? But we can have issues in the political, legal and economic environment in emerging economies, more issues, okay? But also we can have more opportunities because the emerging economies are growing faster than the developed economies and that's where most of the growth is going to come from in the future, okay? It's like we have anything. Say one country's economy, their GDP is up here. Okay? One country's economy, GDP is here. So obviously this one can grow faster. Okay? This one's GDP is already high. So it can't grow very fast. It's growing slowly, just 2% a year in developed economies. Okay? But emerging economies, their GDP is lower, so they're catching up. So clearly they can grow faster. They can grow at 5%, 7% a year. Okay? So there can be more opportunities in the high growth economy. So these days most developing countries or emerging economies, their main objective is to industrialize and econo get economic growth. Why? Because if we increase our GDP, economic growth, what can happen afterwards is uh, we, we achieve our social goals, okay? Because we have economic growth, people pay more taxes, we can spend more money on education, we can spend more money on healthcare, so we can have a virtuous circle, okay? More money on education and healthcare, higher G GDP growth, better qualified, better qualified workforce, okay? More taxes, more money on education, more qualified workforce, okay? So, uh, they're trying to, to increase the GDP. GDP, of course, I think the HDI is a better measurement for companies than the GDP. So just, uh, you can Google the HDI. So, just go to Google and type in HDI. Or, <coughs> the first hit is the Human Development Index. So you can click on that. Human Development Index. So, Human Development Index gives countries a score on human development. Okay? So, you can go to the website, HDI, and then Country Profiles here. Okay? So, just type in HDI, click on the link, Country Profiles. So they give the score to the country, very high development, high development, medium development, low human development. Okay? So we can see that the dark colored countries is usually also the GDP is high. Okay? But Korea is also a dark colored country. Okay? Japan, uh, down here Chile, Argentina, okay? uh, the Middle East. Australia, then developing countries, high human development, big emerging economies like China and Russia and Brazil. Okay. Then uh, medium development, we have India, 1.5 million people. Okay. And low human development, we talked about 50 countries in sub Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. Okay. So 
we could be look, this could be GDP, but the HDI index accounts for not just GDP, it also accounts for education. Like for example, how many years do students stay in school for? How many years education do we get? And life expectancy. Do you understand life expectancy? So they take into account the health, education and GDP. Okay? Not just GDP, to show how the country is doing. And I, that's better because a country like in the Middle East, a country like Qatar, Qatar has the third highest GDP in the world because it has a lot of oil. But its education system is not developed. And its health system is not developed. Okay? Whereas on the other hand, Korea has the, the 27th highest GDP in the world. Why? But on the Human Development Index, it's 12th. Because Korea has very high educational number of people getting qualified in education and also a good health system. Okay? So can we say that Qatar is more developed than Korea because their GDP is higher? No, right? They don't have good health system or education system. They just have a lot of oil and a small, very small country. So HDI gives us a better uh, summary of, of the country's development. Okay? But GDP is one of the factors. So, anyway, we're going to be mainly looking at the regions which is high or medium or low. Okay? So, these days there is a trend of privatization. Countries like China and India in the 1990s or 80s, almost everything was owned by the government and run by the government. But also Russia, okay? But ge generally these days, countries are privatizing the industry. For example, in China, can you think of any examples that the government owned before but has been now is private? No idea? Like housing? Did the government run all of the housing 20 years ago? But now a lot of housing is private? No. Currently, uh, 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 like, uh, they are owned by private companies. Okay. So the government also owns a lot of manufacturing companies like steel companies, that kind of thing. So then they move into the private hands. So. Marketing can make a contribution to the con con countries and countries' development. Why? Because marketing helps to fit production and demand. Okay? So I could be producing something very useful. Like, for example, I'm producing mosquito net. Do you understand mosquito net? Yes. So we put mosquito net over. It's going to save lives. But a lot of people don't have mosquito nets in countries with malaria and so on. Okay? So marketing is going to let the people know that you need a mosquito net to stop you from getting malaria. Right? Some people don't, don't really realize. Okay? So marketing is giving some good tool here as well to match the product with the customers. So the company can make a product profit and the customers can get something useful. <clears throat> so once it's used in the right way, okay, we saw the bad example of Nestle where they were marketing the baby powder, which was causing a problem, right? But maybe Nestle has another product, like making clean water, how to filter the water. You understand filter? Then if they're marketing that product well, then that's doing good for society, right? So, marketing process is critical in economic growth. And also, it helps support distribution. <coughs> so, when we're marketing in an emerging economy, we have to change our marketing for the situation and customize it okay, more. Uh, a promotional program for a population that is 50% illiterate, means 50% can't write, is very different from a program for a population that is 95% literate. Okay? So for example, we can use pictures instead of the words, right, when we're advertising our product. So if we click, we can click on this link here. 
So we can look at the Nation Master website and we can see the this has the education level for the different countries. Just come to me at the end of the class, okay, and I will assign you to the group. 